Evanston has been a house of horrors for Badger fans. More of the same this weekend. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Uh, we'll be talking about offense, defense, what Northwestern's like. But first, we're going to start with, it's been a house of horrors. What is that home field like? We are bringing on Henry Freeman, um, daily Northwestern sports editor, to join the show. Bring us a little Northwestern perspective. Henry, man, I want to talk to you about this because... Badger fans, that place has been a house of horrors for Wisconsin. They have gone down to Evanston and lost time and time again. What is this new stadium like? What kind of, if any, home field advantage does Northwestern have there? Yeah, Ryan. So I've got good news for, for the Badgers fans is the house of horrors has been demolished. Uh, at this at this current moment, uh, they're still rebuilding Ryan Field. Um, and there's just a pit in the pit pit in the foundation where it used to be so for those of you that don't know northwestern has it's been playing at a lakefront temporary stadium that it's it's our home to our soccer teams and all the cross teams regularly but we added 12,000 uh, 12,000 seat capacity stadium um and we've been calling it the lakeside fields the real name's northwestern medicine field at martin stadium which is a mouthful but it's a real it's a real cool venue to be at um if you're high up you can you can see the lake from from the press box which is my favorite part of hanging out there but it's it's a unique atmosphere i i will say i've ha- i've been to one of the home games it was against indiana and it was 75 percent hoosier fans and i've got a feeling wisconsin's what an hour and a half away from evanston right yeah a couple hours yep yeah, so I'm, I've got a feeling if they're coming four hours from Bloomington, they're coming. They're coming from Madison. They're gonna be. They're gonna be loud, and it's gonna feel like a. It's gonna feel like a home dress rehearsal practice because it does not get that loud uh, at the stadium. Thank goodness, man. That they, they couldn't tear that old stadium apart fast enough for Badger fans. <laughs> so thank goodness for that. Um, I want to ask you this, man. Let's let's shift to Northwestern a little bit. Three and um, coming off that North, uh, big win against Maryland, uh, kind of caught fire in the second half there in the fourth quarter with some turnovers, but. Played well. I think this team looks like they're playing better. What can we expect offensively from Northwestern? Yeah, I think most of us were pretty surprised by the result out in College Park um, last Friday. Um, We we thought it was going to be a close game. We didn't know we were going to exert our dominance. I think Jack Lausch is kind of finding his stride. Uh, You know, it's his fourth or fifth collegiate start, and the first couple were really ugly. But I think he's starting to find some confidence in the pocket. He's been throwing some deep balls um, against Maryland. He was connecting with uh, wide receiver A.J. Henning, wide receiver Bryce Kurtz. He's throwing some real deep shots. I think he completed four passes over 25 yards uh, in length. Um, and he, one of the one of an incompletion he threw was an Aaron Rodgers-esque, like right on the money in, in the window through the hands of a receiver that would have been down 40 yards down the seam. So he's developing um, into the quarterback that Northwestern fans are hoping for. I think there's a lot of optimism around the quarterback position right now, especially considering Lausch still has three years of eligibility. Um, And he also has the running ability, which is super impactful. He can, he can turn on the jets, um, expect a lot of quarterback runs, um, some RPO action. Zach Lujan, who came over the, from South Dakota state, our offensive coordinator. um, He has been really like a West coast style, getting the ball out quickly kind of scheme. So I expect a lot of, runs on the ground uh, a lot of a lot of feeding Lausch, letting him cook um and just trying just i think trying to build off confidence would be what Lausch is looking for yeah his mobility feels like like something defenses have to always be accounting for it, it he's a pretty good athlete um the deep passes look good uh bryce kurtz feels like your your biggest deep play threat who else on offense whether it's porter or tight end or someone else who else on offense the badger fans kind of need to be aware of I think AJ Henning. Um, he's a graduate transfer wide receiver. Uh, came here over, came here last year, transferred from Michigan, where he spent the previous couple. Um, and he is one of those guys that I remember. Josh Gaddis, the Michigan offensive coordinator, a couple of years ago. He his his philosophy was speed in space, and Henning kind of exemplifies that. If you get him on a slant and he finds room to run, he'll be he'll be he'll he'll be he'll be a touchdown. He's 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 our he was our kick return guy last year. Um, he's, he's a big play guy, but also just a 
jet sweep end around sort of guy. And so the versatility that he has, I think, will be something to watch for. Talk to me about the on the defensive side. Uh, the Badgers are going to come in. They have a pretty experienced offensive line. They're going to want run a, want to run the ball. Northwestern's been pretty good against the the ground game this year. Defensively, what does Northwestern look like? Strengths, weaknesses, and who do Badger fans need to kind of watch out for? So defensively, our biggest strength, Northwestern's biggest strength, that is, is the front seven. Um, head coach David Braun is a defensive guy by trade. Uh, he brought he he promoted the linebackers coach of last year, Tim McGargle, to defensive coordinator this year, and. I mean, death taxes and Northwestern having strong linebackers, right? So yep. Xander Mueller and Mac Uline have been really, really powerful so far. Um, Car Carmine Bastone, the defensive tackle, made his season debut last week against Maryland. He forced a fumble. The defensive line, Anto Saka, uh, Anto Saka, rather, I'm sorry. Uh, Anto Saka, he is a pass rush machine. He's a third down specialist, sort of like a Bryce Huff type, like in the NFL, third down pass specialist rusher who will get to the quarterback. But I think I think the Northwestern front seven will be a strong matchup for the Badgers running court. However, the secondary, that's where we're at weakness. Even though quarterback Theron Johnson, he he um, he leads the Big Ten in pass breakups, but the, the secondary has shown flashes of not 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 greatness, really, to be quite candid. And Against Indiana, Curtis Rourke threaded the needle. I, I think he mm. probably had five or six incompletions. He he dominated that that defensive back room, and I think you guys as quarterback will be able to step it up. Well, I'm curious with with Northwestern if they win this game, or, or we're going to get into predictions in a second. But what's what's the path to victory for them? How, how how do they want to win this game? Is it is it through um, like you said? Uh, Big big plays on the offensive side and the controlling the ground game defensively. Do they need a turnover? How is the special teams like Wisconsin or Northwestern wins this game? What is their game script? Well, special teams. Northwestern has a running back named Joe Hyman, who's our kickoff, who's the kickoff specialist, and he's really done a phenomenal job there. Um, a ninety-six yarder against Washington that somehow managed to end in zero points for the Cats. But I think the best way, the best path to victory for Northwestern is to play a game that's dominated by defense, that doesn't force Lausch into having to do too much. Because once the game gets into Lausch's hands, he he's he's growing in confidence, but he's not at the point where he can engineer a comeback. So if if the Cats can stay on tracks, lock down on defense, get in front early, this squad I don't think is that built to give up a lead. And so I feel. Whoever scores first might might really win this ball game. What's what's the big picture here with Northwestern? I'm very curious. Obviously, new facilities, new stadium. Braun feels like a great fit at, at head coach if you can keep him. Like internally, what's the looking past this season in this game? What's the optimism level for this program going forward in the Big Ten? I think I think the optimism since Coach Braun came in and guided the team to eight and five in a bowl months after a scandal just shook up this entire a scandal that our paper reported by the way uh the daily northwestern um after after that whole scandal took place you know braun came in and he really he just righted the ship and i think northwestern football is in that place where it, it things are looking up things are looking as though braun is the right guy he knows how to effectively lead he's a very well-spoken coach and press conferences he's he's kind with the media so that's a big plus for us right and i mean the talent we have the recruiting class we've we've begun to establish like thing things are looking good i'm not sure if the if the bowl season is this year i think that the schedule is so tough we have to play still michigan ohio state and illinois in three straight weeks so that'll be that'll be something to that'll be fun oh, <laughs> um, yeah that, but, that's a word for it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but but yeah, the optimism for the long term and especially with Lausch still being a redshirt sophomore, that's huge for us. And so I believe that I believe that things are on the right path. Uh, a couple more quick questions again. Definitely appreciate your time. Um, for everyone tuning into the show, his Henry's to uh, Twitter account is down there. Go follow him. Go check out the work he's putting out there. Who's who's an X factor in this game for you? Maybe somebody who Badger fans don't talk about a lot. Somebody who doesn't get a lot of publicity that that could make a big impact in this game this weekend. Someone who make, who make a big impact. I kind of want to see some more of the of the wide receivers. Um, it, it really feels to me as though Lausch has three targets. Um, he's got Bryce Kurtz. He's got 
AJ Henning, and then he's got his tight ends, which will be either Marshall Lang or Thomas Gordon. But I want to see the Cats wide receiver through. I want to see Calvin Johnson Jr. get involved, um, go go down the field, try a deep shot or a quick a quick zig for for like what, just nine yards. Like I want to see him involved. I want to see Lausch mix up the play, mix up his passes, his his um, receivers. I'm sorry, and I, I just think that would be helpful um, in in repel in in score in the scoring offense. You know, I mean. He completed 18 – he threw 18 passes in the win over Maryland, and that was it. So, I don't know. I think Calvin Johnson or the running back, Caleb Komalafe, he's, uh, who is really a power back, kind of totes the ball around the goal line. I'd like to see him punch it in uh, this week. Let's let's get into game prediction, but first I want to ask you, have you had a game yet where you said you've been at one of these where the wind has really come off the lake? Is that an expectation? Have the coaches or players talked about potentially this year where weather might – like honestly, with that location, take over a game. So yes, yeah, so when uh, in the Daily Northwestern, we have we we check the wind forecast uh, before every game. Um, I haven't particularly noticed it to be a factor in football. I will say that during some soccer matches I've covered, you're in the press box and the wind is just battering against the thing, and it's you know it's like a temporary thing, so it's just made of like metal and plastic, and you feel like the thing's gonna collapse on you. Uh, the wind, the wind definitely picks up, um, but. I haven't really noticed it that much in, uh, in in football's context. I know it's forecasted to be six to eight miles an hour steady wind um, heading into heading into the game, but I might I mean I mean it might impact the kicks, but I haven't noticed it. Okay, not a big one. Hopefully, uh, let's go game predictions. What what do you think? This how do you think this game will play out this weekend? Wisconsin is I think a seven point favorite at this point. Um, I know you made a game prediction in your paper as well. Where do you see this one going? Sure, yeah. So I am a member of the Daily Northwestern's Fearless Forecasters. I'm currently hovering just about 500, which is right where I like to be. Um, and so I think, I think, I think Wisconsin. I think they're gonna have. It's gonna be a strong offensive game. I think that that you guys are gonna exploit the secondary, as I mentioned. I think there'll be a couple long bombs, um, touchdowns. But I think Northwestern will fight back. I think we're gonna have. There's gonna be a strong running game. Cam Porter who's had a phenomenal year is back healthy. Um, and that's, that's, that's huge for the offense. Um, but ultimately I think the Badgers do prevail. However, the cats cover, um, my final score prediction will be Wisconsin 27 Northwestern 23. Mm, I think Badger fans, and I think I can speak for a lot of them. They'll get out of Evanston with the win any way they can one point, half point, one to zero. It doesn't matter. Getting out of Evanston with a win is crucial for the Badgers this year. So, 27 23 they would absolutely take it uh henry freeman thank you so much for tuning or for joining the show man and dropping some insight on northwestern really do appreciate you for everybody tuning in thank you so much for listening to locked on badgers and we'll be back tomorrow